Dear students, now I am going to explain about the introduction part of laser. So what is mean by laser, how it is working, what is the principle behind this production of light and then what are the types of laser, everything we are going to discuss in this series of videos. So let us get into the video first. So first laser, L-A-S-E-R. Let us see what is this. So the L is, L stands for light, okay, A, amplification, S for stimulated, E for emission, and R for radiation. Okay, so light amplification, stimulated emission, radiation. Actually, this is it is the acronym. If you join all the first letters of this words, then it becomes L A S E R laser. So laser is an acronym of light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Okay. So, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, light is amplified. What is the meaning of amplification? So, amplification is nothing but increasing the, increasing the intensity of light. Increasing the intensity of light. Okay. So, here in, intensity is nothing but I which is equal to power per unit area power per unit area so the light intensity is increased by the process of stimulated emission of radiation so this is this is the process stimulated emission of radiation by means of this process the light is amplified the light is increased that the intensity of the light is increased okay so now you have idea about what is l a s e r Okay, and then how can we define the laser? So, laser is a device, it is a device which generates light, which generates light as well as it amplifies. Okay, as well as it amplifies. It amplifies. That means by seeing this, we will think it only amplifies, not only amplify, first it generates light and amplifies as well. Okay, so laser is a device which generates light and amplifies the intensity of light, right? So the next thing is who invented laser? So T. H. Maiman, T. H. Maiman, in the year of 1960, developed ruby laser. Developed ruby laser. Okay, he only invented laser right so first to discuss about the that means introduction part for laser first we should thorough about the light what is mean by light how the light is produced who is producing the light so that part we will discuss now so now i am going to discuss about light what is mean by light so now light is nothing but a kind of energy a kind of it's a form of energy this energy can be released by the form of energy is released by an atom okay who is producing the light atom so kind of energy which is released by an atom okay and moreover light is made up of small particles light is made up of small particle small particles called photons called photons so photons means already we have idea about it that is bundles of energy bundles or packets of energy bundles or packets of energy so light is a kind of energy which is released by an atom and which is made up of small particles called photons okay and moreover light is having dual nature light is having dual nature so what is the meaning of dual nature one the light can behave as a particle as well as as well as wave that means if you consider the photon photon means already i mentioned it is a small particle so it is having the particle nature and when the photon is flowing okay the flow of photon the flow of photon behaves as a wave behaves as a wave so now the photon is having both the nature particle nature as well as wave nature so that the light is having dual nature 
okay so these are the things we should know about light it is a kind of energy which is released by an atom and then uh, this light is made up of small particles called photons photons are nothing but bundles or packets of energy and the light is having dual nature that means it acts as a particle as well as wave okay so i said light is that means the energy is released by an atom so first we should know the structure of the atom and how it is releasing the energy as a light okay so let us go into that so now we are going to discuss about structure of an atom structure of an atom structure of an atom so what is the structure of an atom so in the center part nucleus will be there okay and then around the nucleus electrons will be revolving okay in different shells different orbit or different shells right so the center part is called the center part is called nucleus the center part is called nucleus nucleus consist of proton and neutrons okay the protons and the neutrons are combined together by means of strong nuclear forces protons are positively charged and the neutrons are that means it does not have any charge that's what it is neutral charge so the overall charge of the nucleus is positive charge right and then here some different orbits are there for example this is first orbit which is nearer to the nucleus is first orbit or shell we can call it as orbit or shell first shell or first orbit okay the next one is the second orbit and the next one is third orbit like this okay so in this orbit electrons will be present see here in the first orbit two electrons in the second orbit eight electrons will be revolving around the nucleus so in the that is third orbit also electrons will be present right so now you see the elect this is the structure of an atom so the center part is the nucleus so the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons protons are having positive charge neutrons are having neutral charge so as a whole that is overall charge of the nucleus become positive charge and these are the electrons so electrons are revolving in different orbits the electrons are having negative charge right this is the structure of an atom so each orbit is there no the each orbit consisting of a unique energy level for example so the first orbit is there no the first orbit is represented by the energy level e1 okay so the each orbit is distinguished by unique energy level right and the next one is e2 and the next one is e3 so here listen carefully so the electrons which are present in the outermost orbit are which is at a larger distance from the nucleus will have higher energy will have higher energy once again i will repeat the electrons which are present in the outermost orbit are which are at the larger distance from the nucleus will have higher energy okay and then the electrons which are present in the nearer orbit which is which is nearer to the nucleus so those will have lower energy for example e1 means this is lower energy state lower energy state and this one will be the higher energy state higher energy states so the electrons which are present in the e1 or lower energy level means it will have very less energy comparatively with the electrons present in the higher energy level so the electrons will have energy based upon the position where it is revolving okay so now the electrons which are present in the first orbit will have less energy and the electrons which are present in the outermost orbit will have higher energy right so now the next process is the electrons in the lower energy level 
jumps to higher energy level by means of external energy source that means the some energy is required so that the electrons in the lower energy level will go to the will jump to the next energy state or excited energy state so which type of sources will be there so the energy sources the energy sources okay it may be heat light or electric field electrical field so these are the energy sources so when we supply the energy from outside as external source the electrons will gain energy and then it will move to the another energy level okay so how much energy you have to apply that is the difference between the two energy states that means e2 minus e1 if you supply this energy so that the electrons will gain energy and then it will go to the excited state it will go to the higher energy state right so this is absorption process by absorbing the energy it is going the next process will be the electrons which are present in the higher energy state will jump to the lower energy state so by the time it releases photon by the time it releases photon so photon is nothing but the small particle of light photon so uh, by the time when it comes from higher energy level to the lower energy level it releases photons so which has the energy e2 minus e1 which has the energy e2 minus e1 so in this way the electron jumps from higher state to lower state releases photon photon is nothing but light light okay it releases photon so now you can understand how the atom releases the energy in the form of light okay so when the electron present in the higher energy state jumps to the lower energy state it releases energy in the form of photon or light okay so how much energy it releases e2 minus e1 the difference between the two energy states e2 minus e1 so this is emission of light so first process is absorption the second process is emission so now we have the clear idea about how the atom releases energy in the form of light okay and the next one is what are the uh, types of lights we know okay let us discuss that so now i am going to discuss about light sources light sources so examples for light sources are candles lamp sunlight etc sunlight etc so by seeing this example we can identify one thing that is sunlight is the natural light source sunlight is the natural light source and the candles and the lamps are the artificial light source or otherwise man made light sources man made light sources so the first reliable uh, electrical lamp okay has been invented by thomas alva edison thomas alva edison in the year 1879 okay so what he did this is the tungsten filament he applied the electric field so the electric field heated the tungsten filament so it emits the light okay so he is the first person found the invented the lamps okay and the next one is after th that means um, in 1917 okay so einstein predicted that einstein has given the base that means a uh, basic description about the formation of laser okay he only given the basics information about the laser for the formation of the laser so what he predict, predicted in the sense stimulated emission is possible stimulated emission is possible in case of light okay he just predicted and he formed the basis for the discovery of laser right and after that in 1954 in 1954 ch towns ch towns and his co-workers co-workers developed maser 
what they have developed maser so you see here this is maser and we have we are discussing about a laser okay so maser means microwave amplification what is m stands for here microwave okay so they you they formed this stimulated emission of em, emission of radiation but they amplified microwave okay they amplified microwave and then in 1960 th maiman th maiman in the he invented ruby laser he invented ruby laser so here l they have amplified that means in ch towns amplified microwave but th maiman amplified laser okay so who has predicted this einstein only predicted he only given the theoretical basis for the formation of laser and then practically it is done by ch towns and his co-workers by using microwave okay and then th maiman invented this laser so the principle of maser and laser is everything same only here they amplified microwave but here light is amplified that will be the difference okay so next light is different that means laser light is different from ordinary light see here laser is having some special properties so laser laser light is different from ordinary light that is incandescent bulbs okay so why it is different now you see when the electron jumps from excited state to ground state that is higher energy state to lower energy state it releases photon it releases photon but when it is releasing that means when it jumps it is in different time it uh, that means different time it maintains different time different phase and all so the incandescent bulb will produce light but which will be incoherent which will be incoherent so it does not maintain any direction or phase or any time at all so this is the incoherent light okay that is ordinary light but when we come to photon all that means when we come to the laser all the light produced will be in the same direction and the same phase so that will be the main property that means a special property of the laser that we will discuss in the next video but here i would like to explain so now the electron is jumping right so that the electron is losing the energy electron loses its energy right so the energy that means the energy loss of the electron is attributed to the atom that means the atom itself losing the energy so that in this chapter instead of electron transition i am going to use only the atom transition that means we can say the atom is jumping from higher energy state to the lower energy state so hereafter in this chapter uh, that means in the series of videos what we are going to discuss about the laser i use the term atom transition only okay so these are the basic information about the laser remaining things we will discuss in the upcoming videos that is what is the types of laser and what are the characteristics of the laser and what is the working principle of laser types of laser applications of the laser everything we will discuss okay so if you have any doubt regarding this you can ask in the comment box so thank you everyone